Well guys, the time has come. I'm gonna be selling off all the assets within my stock portfolio. I've been contemplating it for a while now, but with the whole Corona outbreak and the stock market taking a plunge, it is what it is. I'm just gonna sell everything and cut my losses. Nah. Hey, what's going on investors and savers? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And with the markets rebounding just a little bit here on Monday, Tuesday, at the time of filming this video, I'm sure that's put a smile on quite a few of your faces. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name's Griffin. And in today's video, we're going to be speaking about this whole coronavirus outbreak and in parallel, the markets that have taken quite a hit over the past week or so. And quite a few people reached out to me asking what I think about this whole market situation. And and whether or not it's a good time to be investing, whether or not you should be buying or selling, and pretty much every single other emotion in between. Now, obviously, it's pretty much impossible to accurately pinpoint just where the market's heading over the next week, month, or even year from now. I certainly don't know. The investor down the road doesn't know, and even Warren Buffett doesn't know. However, one thing that is certain is that if you invest following some fundamental principles and keep investing, whether the market is hot or cold, you're pretty much guaranteed to come out ahead as an investor over the long run and we're going to be speaking about these rules in today's video. So first off, most of you are probably already aware of what's going on with the coronavirus outbreak and how that's having an impact on worldwide financial markets. However, just in case you need a little bit more context as to what's really going on, we're going to be covering that topic briefly and then be in a better position to be comparing what's going on currently and stock market corrections that we've seen in the past. There's really two main causes as to what's currently happening in the financial markets with fear and uncertainty being the largest culprits in the entire situation. The largest unknown here with this current situation is whether or not the coronavirus is going to lead to a prolonged economic slowdown starting in China, which happens to be the largest manufacturer of consumer goods and other products in the world at over $238 billion in exports for the 2019 calendar year. So obviously with this, if China is quarantining individuals and limiting factory production, then goods can't be manufactured and exported to high consumer societies, such as the United States and European countries. This in turn has major impacts on worldwide supply chains, as well as supply and demand, and ultimately the revenues and profit margins of corporations that trade on financial exchanges. Quite simply, if Apple computers can't produce iPhones and get them in the hands of customers, this is gonna have an impact on revenues and ultimately the share price. So that's really the primary fear and unknown surrounding the coronavirus right now. And really what's gonna have an impact on this in the medium and short term is how quickly China can bounce back, getting their workers back in the factories and upping their levels of exports once again. Now, the second issue that we're dealing with in regards to the coronavirus in my opinion, happens to do with emotion and investor speculation that there would in fact be a market correction or crash in 2020. And honestly, I can't blame investors. I mean, over the past year, there's just been so many videos and articles speaking about a recession that's going to happen in the year 2020. But what I find ironic about this whole situation is that the primary reason as to why so many investors and just people in general were expecting a market crash in 2020 was because historically speaking, following such a long bull run or just any bull run for that matter, we're going to be experiencing either a market correction or a crash. And I'm not dismissing this fact or reality of the past. However, I do believe that this sort of expectation that there was going to be a market correction in 2020 led to higher sell-offs than there could have been in a more organic fashion. And I really think that last week when there was the first signs of the coronavirus and the stock market crashing a little bit, people were kind of like, oh my God, this is it, the crash that we've been expecting and so many people have been speaking about. It's time to really unload all our stocks and equities and go back into cash. This comes back to the concepts that I was speaking about in the Shopify stock price analysis video, where essentially I was mentioning the fact that stock prices are highly correlated with investor emotions and speculation. All of this has led to the S&P 500 dropping by roughly 15% since the S&P 500 high of $3,386 on the 19th of February, all the way down to roughly $2,864 on the 28th of February. 
Now, I'm not saying that a 15% drop isn't a lot. It is. However, if you take into account the fact that in 2019 alone, the S&P 500 appreciated by 28.8%. So really what we're experiencing here, in my opinion, is a natural market correction. And it's something we're going to see time and time again, as we've seen in the past time and time again. I'm personally not worried. In fact, even yesterday as I was planning out this video and now today as I'm going about filming the video, markets have somewhat corrected by around four to around four and a half percent. And this is a perfect opportunity now for news outlets to jump on the situation, make an article and get views. Essentially what I'm saying here is we really don't know if it's gonna correct and continue going down or if it's gonna correct, trend sideways and eventually go back up. It's really something that we can't predict as as investors. All right, so with all that said, what are some things that you should keep in mind for a situation like this and how am I reacting with my investments? First things first, and I know this can be extremely difficult to apply when your money's on the line. However, it's absolutely critical that you keep your emotions out of your investing and always remember that it is 100% normal and expected that there's going to be market ups and downs throughout the course of your investing. If you've just started investing in the past year, then sorry to break it to you, but this is going to happen. It's just a reality when you're investing and welcome to your first correction. It hurts temporarily, but if you stay to your plan and invest for the long term, you will come out ahead as an investor. If we take a quick look at a chart showcasing the stock market returns over the past couple of years, it is quite evident that there are significantly more years where the overall stock market was up at the end of the year versus years where the stock market was down. And if as an investor, you have a long time horizon in front of you and you continue investing regardless of the price combined with the fact that you invest in a broad market ETFs or have a a well diversified portfolio on average, you can expect a 7% annualized return with your investments in the stock market. As Warren Buffett would say, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. In context, currently right now with the coronavirus, as everyone is selling off their positions, you should be in the market and purchasing stocks while prices are cheap. In parallel to that first point, I'll be the first one to admit that even though it's difficult seeing your portfolio take a hit when markets are down, trust me, I'm human too and seeing my portfolio go down in value by almost 10% over the course of one single week. It's tough. However, do keep in mind that this is not the period of time when you want to be selling your assets. This is when you want to be doubling down and buying more of the companies that you've purchased in the past in order to take advantage of market prices that are relatively low in contrast to what they're worth. The thing is, if you've gone about selecting your securities the same way that I pick and choose which securities I invest in, then ultimately you have nothing to worry about because I go into a position based on fundamental fundamentals that I personally believe in in a company as well as strong financials and then increasing dividend payments over time regardless of the market climate. For this reason, the stocks and ETFs that I purchased two months ago are no different last week or this week even amidst this whole coronavirus situation. The revenues are the same, the cash distributions are the same, and so on and so on. So essentially, if I go about purchasing some more of these securities that I've already purchased, I'm getting them at a lower price than what they're actually worth. You catch my drift here? Always keep in mind that the price you're seeing for a specific stock or ETF on the market is not necessarily correlated with the true value of that position based on value investing principles. The market value of a security is quite simply a snapshot in time of what an investor is willing to sell a share for and at the same time what an investor is willing to buy a share for. So with all that said, I want you to remember that during a market correction, if your funds are invested in different securities and funds, then a temporary market lull is simply a paper loss if you don't go about selling your investments. If you don't go about selling your assets while in a position of value loss, then you aren't actually materializing a loss in the first place. Following that same logic, the opposite is also true. If you have investments that go up in value by say 800%, but you never actually go about selling those positions, then you only ever had a paper gain. Basically what I'm saying here is invest for the long term, build up investor 
greater resilience, invest in companies that have strong financials, and then double down in periods such as right now. For my own investments, I would recommend you go about doing the same. I'm having a long-term outlook on my investments, and then I'm doubling down on positions that I already own, such as, for example, VFV, AP.UN, Fortis, Royal Bank of Canada, TD, Intact Financial, and a variety of others, and then also some American securities, such as, for example, Apple and Visa. And I'm also going to continue going about diversifying my overall portfolio with stocks and ETFs, as well as purchasing some more real estate. I'm planning on purchasing some more rental properties in the year of 2020 and so on. All right, so now that we have a good grasp as to what's going on with the coronavirus and my overall philosophy around the situation, what is nonetheless a portfolio that you can construct in order to weather through situations such as this one? Well, obviously this is a topic that is much too large for this one specific YouTube video. After all, my entire channel speaks about this stuff. However, I am a fan of ETF investing as well as dividend investing. If you're interested in learning more about how you can go about creating your own dividend investment portfolio or ETF portfolio, then I highly recommend you smash the like button and check out some of the other videos on my channel. I've left some links down in the description for easy access to some of those best videos. In addition to this, if you really do want to prepare for future corrections and potential recessions, then it could be smart to hold some consumer defensive positions as well as some utility positions in your overall portfolio because typically, even during a time of recession, these types of companies are going to continue paying dividends if they're dividend aristocrats and then they're also going to take less of a hit because typically consumers still have to consume these types of products. So that folks is my take on what's going on with the coronavirus right now and in parallel what is happening with the stock market. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of the video and where you think the market's going to be heading over the coming months. Also, if you're interested in learning more about how you can build your very own dividend portfolio, then make sure to check out the video right here. And if you want to learn more about a real estate investment trust investing, then check out the video right here. So on that note, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.